think it was fifty thousand dollars on email and phone each month and i'm just like who the hell are you talking to who uh, who clothes are you washing for ten thousand dollars a month it's like you guys are going to the life of the, the rich and the famous like ten thousand dollars a month on laundry bitch what are you washing people Everybody know about the versus battles and how they are monumental and sort of like a celebration for a lot of artists that we grew up with, especially those artists um, in the 90s and the 80s and, sh you know, Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight, they were well beyond that time. So it's a great celebration, especially in this pandemic moment where we're all in our homes or we're with our loved ones in our homes. It's, a, it's sort of like a concert um, opportunity. And... Um, so, you know, everybody wants to get their, their opportunity to do it. Um, and so Tony Braxton, Missy Elliott had had a conversation with Tony Braxton about, you know, Showtime, you need to go up there and do it. You need, you need to go and do it. And Tony Braxton told her, yeah, you know, I would love to do it. But, you know, I, it would have to be with somebody like Mariah Carey or Mary J. Blige. And baby, social media ate that ass up. They were like, huh? First of all, Mariah would eat you with just her Christmas albums, her Christmas song her selections, and Mary J. Blige will stump all over you. <laughs> so, <laughs> social media was not having that at all. But do you know who they did recommend? They recommended to, um, she said, someone in your league might be Tamia or Deborah Cox. Now, I might even just want to see Tamia and Deborah Cox battle it out. Um, I, I would say for me, I could see Tony Braxton and someone like um, a Janet, a Janet Jackson. No, she can't even do Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson is in her own league. So in all of the midst of it, um, Nene Leakes did finally respond to Wendy Williams. And she did a, a nice little video on her page. And she basically, in her nice you know, polished manner. She um, addressed both of them. And what we took from it is, is that Wendy Williams needs to go drain her legs. Um, Spend more of your time trying to figure out how you can drain your enormously large legs and feet, okay? Opposed to worrying about my family and what we are doing. You need to find the nearest water pill, okay? I guess apparently both her ankles and her legs and her feet need some draining. And it's funny because, you know, I always say this, watch what ex-friends say to each other when they insult each other because they know how to get at the other person or they know specifically what to say to get at the other person. Nene didn't say anything about her doing drugs. She didn't say anything about her, her show not being renewed. She said something about the lady needing to drain her legs, which makes me feel as if there was a once upon a time where Wendy Williams may have mentioned to Nene that she doesn't like the appearance of her legs or something along those lines, but it was just odd that she just told her, you need to drain your legs. That's, I mean, that's not an insult I would throw at someone to drain their legs, but again, we're not dealing with the typical, um, aged people reading each other um and then what we also learned is that no one knew andy before andy knew okay. Mimi. and andy remember no one knew you until you knew me Again, no one knew Andy before andy knew Mimi, and i thought that was just so clever and so funny um there's been <laughs> no rebuttal from either side, uh, both Andy or Nene, uh, both Andy or w uh, Wendy Williams. And I think they've learned to master the court of public opinion and how to allow public opinion to do its thing before they then insert their um, their own response. Um, sometimes what will happen is something will occur. And if you if your image or your public image has the higher risk of being shattered by coming out and making a statement too soon you sit back and you be reserved and so what we're watching right now is andy cohen and both wendy williams sit back andy cohen was both was accused of being a racist and wendy williams was accused of needing to drain their legs and 
um, still being a cokehead. So for both of them, it's let's just sit back and let the public opinion talk. Let Wendy Williams do her, th let Nene do her thing. And I guarantee you once this is subside, maybe a couple of months from now, Andy will have a statement. Wendy will have a statement. Wendy has a whole documentary coming out on, on um, Lifetime Network or Oxygen Network in January. So I'm sure around that time, we'll get her talking about this to drum up some more, you know, com some more noise for her, her uh, documentary on Lifetime. So I'm honestly, they're too old to be doing this. If you're not doing it for a coin, cut it out. Like if there's no TV show involved in this, if, if you're not going on a, a Yon Love, Vent Von Zant, fix my life, fix my friendship, then cut it out. Dr. Dre and his wife. So Dr. Um, a couple of days ago, I think I reported that Dr. Dre's wife wants to um, sue, um, go to court, divorce court, and she wants a payout of $2 million a month for $900,000 in entertainment fees, $10,000 in laundry each month. I think it was $50,000 on email and phone each month. And I'm just like, who the hell are you talking to? Who are, who clothes are you washing for $10,000 a month? It's like, you guys are going to the life of the, the rich and the famous, like $10,000 a month on laundry. Bitch, what are you washing? People. Um, and then I think she, um, had, um, something in there about, um, she wanted to also, Oh, she had withdrew like all of the money out of Dr. Dre's business accounts and he, she still wants money. So he came back and basically said, look, I'm allowing you to live in my $25 million Malibu mansion. I don't want anything for it. Um, he said he covers all of her expenses on his Amex Centurion black card um, and that his business manager makes sure and reconciles the payments for that and makes sure it's paid on time. So what does she need money for? Um, and then he said all of her food is prepared by his chef, which his chef delivers meals to her home, the Malibu mansion three to five times a week. Um, and so he's basically saying that she surrounded herself by opportunistic lawyers and they are trying to take advantage of her and him in the situation and that he refuses to do anything else. No, I had to think I'm living in your $25 million Malibu mansion. I got a black card. And I got prepared meals. Um, okay. Like, what? What do these? What do? What do y'all be wanting for? Is it power? Is it control? Is it a statement? Like, you get to. I would never understand. Um, at that level, what issues you two are going through and what that kind of power struggle is. But I'll tell you right now in my life and my mindset now. Yeah, I'll be good. Mhm. Mm I'll be good in the mansion. We as long as we get a divorce and you still taking care of all of this stuff, I'd be good. Yeah, I'd be good. I really, I really will. It's laying off 28,000 employees in California. Um, and that's about 67% of that is part-time employees. And we know that affects a lot of the low level and those low skill, um, wa low wages and low skill jobs. And so that's gonna hit, that's gonna hit the homes of a lot of uh, middle American and low um, cl middle class American families. Um, it's sad because Disney, you know, they had laid, uh, they had furloughed a lot of these employees since April. So they had just been sitting home trying to figure it out. And then this is the outcome of that. They had tried to bring some people back, um, to work. Um, and so some people from California went to Florida because, you know, California did not open up their parks like Florida did, but California still has decided not to open it up. They did open up their shopping and dining experience town in Cali, but they won't open up the parks and recreation and their experiences. Um, so this impacted their business. And so they are going to lay them off. And that's a huge, huge chunk of, um, that's a huge chunk of their labor force, 28,000 employees over in California. So I am sending my, um, my well wishes to those families. Disney did say they, they will work with each employee on a severance package, as well as a transition to another job, to another company, um, by offering recommendations and working with them. So kudos to Disney. Um, okay. And in, in the, in the news, the freaky news. So Jamie and Garcelle Beauvoir, which um, from the, um, she was fancy from the Jamie Foxx show. Um, and so recently she was on her talk at night show or she was on some talk, some, some nightly talk show 
where they get candid and they ask questions and both her and Jamie Foxx was on the show. And so um, somebody asked, you know, why aren't you two together? Like what happened? Why aren't you together? And uh, Garcelle's um, response was sort of like, you know, we're in a great place now. We have a great friendship, you know, for a while we weren't talking, but we are now. And then she decides out of nowhere to say, plus he's too big for me. What am I gonna do with all of that? Now I have kinda, I kinda sort of knew that, <laughs> but damn. <laughs> and so he kinda backed it up and he, he said something like, um, you know, whatever you can't chew on, you got to put it in a doggy bag and take it home. I'm like, well, not, all right, Jamie. <laughs> um, but I think they would have been a cute couple. I think um, that would have been like Hollywood royalty almost because she is very polished and poised. She, she gives me diva. Like, I think it was excellent choice for her to be on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She couldn't, you know, she, that's that was perfect for her. And I think Jamie Foxx is a very well stand up kind of guy. And I think that those two together would have gave, given us like a, that uh, black Hollywood power couple. So um, shout out to them. Well, Kanye always is in the news for me, apparently. I don't know if I have some type of keyword in my search box or what's going on, but recently Charlemagne the God, uh, um, was telling a story about how um, Kanye West th should be the one to talk about giving his masters back to his artists because he himself got Big Sean into a bad deal with him and Good Music label. Essentially, and I didn't know this, 50% of Sean's masters as well as 50% of Big Sean's royalties go all to Kanye West. So when Big um, Kanye made that announcement that he was giving back 50% of artists were my masters, he said nothing of the royalty. So I t I knew it. Kanye West will still impact or make an economic impact from his artists some way or somehow. Um, the man's a billionaire. He wants to keep his billionaire status. Um, but he Charlemagne the God went on to further state that. Um, Kanye West owes Big Sean to the tune of three million dollars, um, and he talks about how graceful Big Sean has been to show deference to this man, even amidst all of this, him owing you money and being in a bad deal. So, um, shout out to Big Sean one for having the strength to persevere through all of that. Um, Kanye West, you definitely need to do right by your artists if you're gonna be preaching out there, telling people you want one thing but you're doing the another to the other to your own folks. It's like very hypocritical. It's like you're, it, it truly is like a false prophet. Um, and Charlamagne, hey, if this is the kind of truth you're gonna uncover, uncover this kind of stuff. Cause that was really interesting to me. It made me want to go and look at all of the other artists on good music label and see what kind of deal they got themselves into. So um, I'm gonna stay tuned to this story. We'll see what Kanye West has to say about this. <laughs>